of some aid organizations came into town and they wine and dined the the uh, healthcare leaders of the community uh, and were telling them how to talk to women about how to decrease your number of children you have. It wasn't how you know, how can families discern the number of children that they can afford or emotionally support, et cetera, it was, you know, this, what's important is decreasing, making sure these women don't have as many babies as they're having. What they will do is put a, a, a quota. So if you get so many families and particularly women uh, to come to these seminars, to come to these workshops, if you get so many husbands and wives are people who are cohabitating to come to a workshop on reproductive technology and reproductive services, then we will provide you uh, two water wells in your community. Uh, we'll provide you uh, 50 malaria nets. Especially with the government clinics, the nicest room in the building is the one that provides the contraceptives. And, and so, you know, that it, it does seep into the culture. Uh, when I was there last February, uh, some aid organizations came into town and they wine and dined the the uh, healthcare leaders of the community uh, and were telling them how to talk to women about how to decrease your number of children you have. It wasn't how you know, how can families discern the number of children that they can afford or emotionally support, et cetera, it was, you know, this, what's important is decreasing, making sure these women don't have as many babies as they're having. And, and so I, I see that coming in, especially in the rural areas where they have so little, you know, and it is hard just, just to make do from from day to day uh, at the clinic where I've gone to the there have been times when the healthcare workers haven't been paid for months because they just don't have the money and yet they come in and work as I said 24 7 to provide care for the community even though they're not getting paid to do it yeah, and if I, you know, add just a little bit to this in the sense of, so what, you know, what does the, what's the benefit in the sense of quid pro pro, what, 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 what happens here, you know, uh, with this, an example would be, so I'll use the clinic that Dr. Jones is talking about. So, you know, if a doctor is willing to cooperate with an agency, the WHO, the uh, USAID, British Aid, whatever it may be, uh, then the, the benefit is, is that they do get the nicer clinic, they get the nicer equipment, they get the, uh, the better facility, which becomes uh, really, in all honesty, if, if each of us here, if we had two clinics to choose from, one is filthy, unkept, uh, which and a, one that's perfectly clean, well, uh, well uh, uh, and the grass is well manicured, uh, the doctor is well dressed, the nurses are well dressed, which one we're going to head toward then uh, obviously we're going to head toward the one that's cleaner and, and so forth and so on. Also think about this is in many times these, these clinics are quote giving free pharmaceuticals. Uh, and so because they're receiving them for free, but it's a way of, if I may say a word, which is not a, a, a very, uh, uh, maybe a more proper word, but it's a pimping. In other words, once we get people on these particular drugs or on this particular uh, relationship and dependent, then, then they can continue to build uh, on that and then start having more greater access. So that's, that's one thing I've seen. Another thing I've seen is uh, working with the local uh, uh, leaders in a given community. So because they have the greater influence on the larger community. So if the local leadership enters into a partnership, a collaborative relationship, let's say for clean water wells, well, what happens is, is what they will do is put a, a, a quota. So if you get so many families and particularly women uh, to come to these seminars, to come to these workshops, if you get so many husbands and wives are people who are cohabitating to come to a workshop on reproductive technology and reproductive services, then we will provide you uh, two water wells in your community. Uh, we'll provide you uh, 50 malaria nets. Uh, you know, and so what you're seeing is the, the use of these needs. I mean, there is such a need, it's hard for us here in the West to appreciate the need for a malaria net. 
something so simple that you know that's so so it doesn't cost a lot of money to produce but to people in in the developing world where that money is resource is very lacking that net is valuable to them or to have access to to clean water i mean again we don't really we take it so for granted here how many how many of us run you know the tap you know for us men shaving our faces and never turn the water off we just let it run all right and none of us really walk to our tap and wonder is it clean you know, but yet that that's the problem. So these are some of the ways farming equipment, you know, for example, uh, you know, if you own all um, an example of this, this was told to me uh, last year while visiting in a country in Asia, they located oil in, on their in their country for the first time. They've never knew they even had this valuable resource. And so they learned they had it. They have no mechanization, no technology, and the ability to, to pull that resource from the ground. So who do you think comes in is the Western world. And they come in and say, we will draw the oil from the ground for you and so forth, and we'll give you a percentage of it. Well, first of all, at, the, at least the leaders of that country realized that this was such a value. And they said to them, no, we're not doing that. We will wait until we can learn ourselves how to draw it because we this is for our people. This is for our own country. And yet these other groups wanted to take it and exploit the situation. So those are just but a couple of examples there. I mean, there are a litany of examples. I, I know both of us could provide in what we've seen.